Is this enough amaryllis? Is this enough amaryllis? Is this enough amaryllis? You're right, we're still gonna need a lot more amaryllis. Okay, so I'm partly kidding, but I'm partly telling you the truth because this year I've decided to do something completely different that I've never done before. Can you hear Grace chewing her new bone in the background? What I've decided to do is to sell cut amaryllis so that I can increase my amaryllis collection by keeping the bulbs. So I went ahead and ordered a ton of Southern Hemisphere amaryllis bulbs from a company that I ordered from last year called Amaryllis and Caladium Bulb Company. I bought these beautiful pinkalo amaryllis from them. You might remember we planted them in a really big blue pot and I think they bloomed in March. So it's just a perfect amaryllis for March. But I really like this company. I'm happy with the quality of the bulbs. I'm very happy with the price of the bulbs. But what I really love is that on their website, and this is what I'm always looking for, it's very clearly marked whether the bulbs come from the Southern Hemisphere or the Northern Hemisphere. A Southern Hemisphere bulb is going to bloom in approximately six to eight weeks from the time that you plant it. Often it will bloom much sooner. I've had some bloom in three to four weeks. But with all that being said, let's get into the fun part and unbox these amaryllis. Some of these varieties I've grown before, some I already have in my collection, some I've lost due to pests, and others I've never even tried before. So I'm super, super excited. We've got a nice pamphlet with some pretty basic care tips, everything you need to know. And then I remember I really liked the packaging because I could burn it or compost it afterwards. That's another reason I like this company. So this is the first variety I purchased. This one is going to be for cutting. This one is called Picasso and I'll put pictures of all these on the screen next to me right here. Picasso is so, so beautiful. It is a pure white amaryllis with this beautiful, delicate line all around the exterior of the petals and the color of that line is bright, vibrant red. So this one is gonna be so beautiful. The bulbs look good. Number one thing I check a bulb for when it arrives is signs that the bulb has been hurt in transportation or hurt at the warehouse or somewhere along the lines. If it feels mushy at all, or especially if there's like a big mushy area here near the neck, what I've learned from experience is that those bulbs a lot of times do not bloom at all. Sometimes they have problems putting up leaves. So that's the only time that I would probably go ahead, call the company, see if I can get a refund or a replacement. That very rarely happens, but it has happened to me with another company. So these all look great because who wants to waste their time planting an amaryllis bulb that might be damaged, right? Oh, here's another one of my favorites. This is a must grow lemon star. So I think it was maybe two or three years ago that we grew lemon star together. I'll put a picture of my lemon star right here on the screen so you can see an accurate color representation of the bulb. It is so beautiful. It is yellow, but it is just the faintest bit of yellow. It's like as if we had a white amaryllis and someone just blew a dusting of yellow onto the petals, almost an ivory yellow, I would say. So don't be put off by the fact that it's a yellow amaryllis. It's still very romantic, beautiful and subtle, but this was just such a great bulb. And what happened to my bulb is that it got something called glass house red mites, either glass house red mites or glass house mites. I didn't really know how to handle that organically. I couldn't find any information on handling it organically, so I just disposed of the bulbs. So I'm so glad to have these back in my collection. These are for cutting. This feels like it must be my birthday or Christmas or both, all the holidays put together. Every day is a good day when you have amaryllis coming out of a box. Okay, this is the variety that I saw online and I thought I have to try this. This is so incredibly beautiful. It's called Blossom Peacock. Let me know please in the comment section if you've grown this one. I've never grown it before. I've never seen it in person before. So it's a double amaryllis, white with streaks of hot pink along the exterior petals is how it looked to me in the pictures. 
but it just looks so beautiful and different. And once again, I'm going to keep this bulb and hopefully pass it on to my daughter someday. But we are going to sell these as cut flowers this year. All right, let's see who will be joining our Amaryllis family next. Okay, here we have white candle. There's no picture in here, but I have purchased cut white candle before. I'll put a picture right here. Oh my word, so amazing. Generally, white candle is pretty inexpensive because it's very common. A lot of times when you get an amaryllis in a box, it's either red or white. The red is usually red lion. The white is normally either white candle or I think there's another really popular and expensive variety called white Christmas. But this is so beautiful and excellent cut flower. And I don't think I've mentioned it in this video yet. And I know this sounds kind of crazy, but I promise you it's true. Cut amaryllis lasts longer than amaryllis left on the bulb. And I think that must be an energy thing with the bulb itself because the bulb is still busy putting out more leaves, it's putting down roots, it might be putting up more flowering scapes. But when you cut an amaryllis, it will easily last two to three weeks in the vase, just phenomenal. Gracie, which one should we pick next? Do you like this one? Or do you wanna pick this one? Which one smells better? This one? Okay, let's do this one. That was a really good pick, Grace. Do you want some paper in return? Here's some paper. Go have fun. So Grace picked Spartacus, and I think we saw Spartacus last year when we went to Longwood Gardens together. I have grown Minerva, and I think if you look back at my really old Amaryllis content, I was reblooming a Minerva, and that was the first time I ever did a video on reblooming Amaryllis. But Minerva, I don't really like so much. It's more of a orange red and Spartacus is more of a blue red. And so it's red and white together. It really just screams Christmas. This is a variety that we're going to keep a not sell and we're gonna put it in this planter that you might not be able to see on the screen right now, but I'll show you in a second. It's just a planter that we've used before. I didn't buy anything at all for this project, right? This is basically, I wanna make money from these amaryllis and I wanna increase my collection. So let's see who's next. Okay, this one is Mandela and I've never grown this one, but it looks very, very similar to Red Pearl, which you might remember, sorry, that's Grace. You might remember I had that in my collection a couple years ago and it got thrips, a really bad thrip infestation. So I decided to go ahead, trash those bulbs too. So I thought, let me try something a little bit different. Mandela looks similar to Red Pearl and I'm gonna plant these ones in these pots right here. So those are the two varieties we're keeping for our house for Christmas. So this next variety is called Nyora. Hopefully I'm saying that right, N-Y-O-R-A. Let me know if it's really off. My pronunciation is really off in the comment section. But this variety looks almost exactly like Double King to me from the pictures. It's a true pure red with white tips, a double amaryllis. So I have double king in the collection. Let's grow this, compare them side by side. Oh, and the reason why I purchased three of every single bulb is you save money by doing that. I think it takes um, down the bulb price by about a dollar, but mainly I'm gonna sell these in vases from the dollar store tall cylindrical vases with sprigs of pine and currently the price from, I'm not gonna say what company it is, but currently a popular company is selling cut amaryllis with four springs of pine, four stems of amaryllis, four stems of pine for $100 and that doesn't include shipping. And then these bulbs were $11.95, I think, some of the varieties. And the last one we have is Amadeus. I see a lot of people growing Amadeus and I have never grown it before, but it's this really fabulous double white amaryllis with just hints of kind of a deep pink or red on the exterior of the petals. So I'm really excited to grow this one. So that's all for this order, but I do have 35 more amaryllis coming from Longfield Gardens. Those ones are more just for my personal collection, but maybe we'll have to do an unboxing video of those as well. But let's talk a little bit more about cut amaryllis. And why don't we just go ahead and plant them together? 
So as I say, I didn't want to spend any money on this project. So I just used things that I already have around the house. Now, if you watch my front yard makeover, you saw that the boxwoods that I got from InstaHedge, they came in these. They've got really good drainage, and I think they're wide enough for me to fit two bulbs next to each other, or we might have to go in at a diagonal. But basically, I'm planting these up as cutting beds. Look at this, this bulb is already raring to go. Okay, here's a great example where you can tell immediately what is going to be the leaf and what is going to be the flowering scape. So the leaf is much thinner, so here's our leaf, but see right here, this guy? That is our flower right there. That's the money, friends, that's the money. I just love amaryllis season, and I think, you know, if you're on a tight budget, why not sell some cut amaryllis and keep the bulbs for yourself? I can't believe I never thought of doing this before. These don't have a lot of roots on them, um, it really varies company by company what the root system comes like. So I'm not even going to bother rehydrating the root system on these, but you certainly could do that if you like. One of these days I'm going to get around to buying proper tools for planting things up inside, but for now I'm still using all of my kitchenware. This is going to be what we use to get our potting soil out of the bag. Of course, I got my handy dandy watering can, AKA the blender. And that's all we need, right friends? It's all we need. And some more amaryllis. So now I'm just covering them up, leaving about a third of the bulb exposed. I wanna see the nose of the bulb and also the shoulders. I'm gonna water these in lightly right now just to get them started. I'm gonna put them on my radiator just like I always do, amaryllis like it hot. And then I'm not going to water them again until I see about two inches of growth on them. You could see that they really didn't have many roots. And then we just water around the perimeter of the bulbs just to get them started. And really not much water at all. These hardly have any roots on them. It's the heat that's going to cause these bulbs to wake up and start growing more than anything else. And you can even just place an amaryllis bulb on a table in a warm room. If that's a Southern Hemisphere bulb, it's probably just going to bloom out in the open without any soil, without any water. Of course, that bulb will be pretty tired afterwards and it will need to go into potting soil. But the number one reason that I've always heard why people have trouble with amaryllis or lose amaryllis is due to overwatering. I only water mine about once a week once they're actively growing. So friends, I am really excited about this. I love amaryllis. I love cut flowers. I've cut my own amaryllis before, but I've never sold them. I bought them. I bought cut amaryllis. It's crazy expensive. Sometimes it's $20 a stem if you want something really rare, say like a peach double amaryllis, even just a peach amaryllis. I don't even know if peach double exists, but last year I was calling around for cut peach amaryllis singles, and I was getting quoted prices of 20 to $23 a stem, and that's insane. When you think about, you could buy the bulb for 11 to $15. Maybe you're looking at 20, $25 at the most if the bulb is really big in terms of the circumference of the bulb. But now that we have these planted up, let's go ahead and do some in pots for Christmas. So we'll do the same exact thing for this pot. Oh my gosh, I just spilled potting soil all over the floor. <laughs> I gotta clean all this up before my husband gets home. So let's go ahead. Oh look, this one is waking up too. Very exciting, very, very exciting. If you're brand new to amaryllis, welcome to your new addiction. Amaryllis like to be snug in their pots. And I personally like to use these taller pots because I feel like based on my experience with them is that they don't ever topple over when you're using a pot that's taller. Sometimes when you see amaryllis at the grocery store or if you were to buy one of those grow kits, sometimes the pots 
are a little bit wider than necessary and what you want and also short. If you have a short pot, your amaryllis is likely to topple over because it's gonna put out a ton of leaves, a really tall flowering scape, and it might fall over in a stout pot. These tall pots, and I like terracotta, I like stone, something heavy duty, you're not gonna have that problem. And what I'm looking for is basically only one inch between the edge of the amaryllis and the edge of the pot. So let me hold this up before we bury it. So just like this, and you can see it's really tight in there, but that's exactly what I want. Over the course of the entire year, the roots will have completely filled a pot of this size. Sometimes people ask me about repotting amaryllis. Generally, I repot every other year. Sometimes I will repot every year, but it's normally said every two to three years is good. What I'll do the first year after flowering when I go to rebloom is just refresh the top of the soil. So I'll take away about two inches of soil, go ahead and give that new soil, and that usually does the trick. So here it is with the soil on it. That's what I'm looking for. And now once again, just a little bit of water. Why not just use the cup of water I was just drinking? This is plenty of water to get your amaryllis off to a good start. Right around the exterior. So much fun, guys. This is the best day ever. That's it. That's all there is to it. I'm gonna stick my tag in right here. It's really nice that they come with these tags. Pictures on both sides, that's nice. And once again, bright, warm location, and this is going to wake up pretty much right away. Southern hemisphere bulbs, like I said, wake up almost immediately. They're primed and ready to go. A northern hemisphere bulb is gonna take a lot longer to wake up. So we have to answer the question, is this enough amaryllis? I think the answer is no, because I have 35 more amaryllis arriving here in two more weeks. So yes, we are certainly going to need a lot more pots. But friends, I wanna thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I'll be continuing to share updates with you on selling these amaryllis. We'll probably go ahead and just do that together as long as time allows. I'll put a link to Amaryllis and Caladium Bulb Company in the description section below. It's not an affiliate or sponsored link. I don't make any money at all if you buy from them. I just wanna share quality Amaryllis companies with you that I bought from and that I like. So Longfield Gardens, Amaryllis and Caladium Company, those are my two go-tos. So friends, I wanna wish you a wonderful day out there planting amaryllis, hopefully. Hopefully you're not out in your gardens. Hopefully you're planting amaryllis today. <laughs> Bye friends.